In this video, we're going to see how you can set up Parallel GPT. This allows you to run multiple GPT prompts and queries and tasks in parallel without having to do them one by one. Let's get started. First, you need to set up Roy by going to Roy.io and signing in. Once you set up Roy on your workspace, you can create a table from scratch or from a template. Instructions on how you can set up your Roy project is in the description below. All right, first we'll create a table from the parallel GPT template. This template gives you a step-by-step -step guided instructions on how you can set up the table as well as the cloud functions you need for using this template. First, let's click create table. You can give it another name if you like. We can just go with the default one. Let's click next. Here you need to supply your OpenAI API key. This is actually stored securely in your own Google Cloud project. So to do this, click add secret key and that'll take you to your Google Cloud project where you can add a secret by giving it a name OpenAI and then simply copy pasting your key from your OpenAI account. Easy link for that is available here. Okay, so once you create your secret, you can come back to Roy, click refresh and you will see your OpenAI key show up here. We've already set this up, so let's click that and set our secret. Then let's click next. Here in this step, you'll see that we have a pre-built cloud function for using ChatGPT API. Click deploy functions. This takes a minute or so to get deployed to your Google Cloud project. You don't need to wait for this to complete, by the way, you can click proceed. Okay, so this is deployed. That's it, your template is fully set up. When you click finish, it takes you to your table which has all the information you need to get going. Okay, so let's close this information panel. Here, first you see here is the table where you can add rows and columns as you need. Here, there are three columns already added. First is a text column where you will add your prompt. Second is a derivative column where you'll see the response from ChatGPT. And third is created at. So let's add a row and see it in action. As you can see, immediately the created at timestamp is added. And here in the first text column, let's add a prompt. Let's say create a tweet on low code. And as you can see, this next column, which is a derivative column, automatically gets populated with a tweet. If we look into the configuration of this column, you'll see how this works. First is listening to that prompt field. So you can listen to any field here. We are listening to the prompt field. And anytime there's a change in this field, this piece of code runs. This is a JavaScript TypeScript code. You can expand into it to see the full screen mode to see what is going on. And you can see that this is a pre-built code block for using OpenAI GPT. Now you can use this code block as it is if you are using a general purpose GPT. But the good thing here is you can actually go down and tweak it to any use case you want. So for example, if you want to do sentiment analysis on movie reviews and figure out if it is a positive comment, negative comment, or a neutral comment, you can add a system prompt here to say that this AI will be given a movie review comment and it needs to perform sentiment analysis on it and give back one word reply for whether it is positive, negative, or neutral or maybe unknown. And you can also see in this code, a bunch of things are happening. The open AI secret that you stored in the Google Cloud Secret Manager is actually being accessed here and is used in this service. And as you can see, this is a system prompt that we just added. Here in the question of the prompt, the row dot prompt text is being passed in. Row is a utility function where you can actually use any column fields from this table. So here we have the prompt text, which we have used. And you can also access logging by using logging.log or error or info. This gets added to your cloud logs, which we will see in a moment. Here you can see that we are using OpenAI's API to make that call. You can also use a fetch based API call. You can use any NPM packages here. But if for most purpose, you're just tweaking the prompt, you just need to worry about these two sections. Okay, so once you are done, you can come out of the full screen mode and click update. 
this will ask you whether you want to deploy it. A deploy here means that your code will be redeployed to your Google Cloud. So let's go ahead and do that. It takes about a minute or so for this to complete. You can follow along the updates here or close this away. In the meantime, while your function is deploying, you can test if your changes worked by going here, adding a row. Let's add a movie review. So you can say acting in this movie was incredible. First, actually what happens is the previously deployed function is automatically triggered, but we want to force re-evaluate to the new thing that we just launched. So as you can see, it says it's a positive comment. Okay, so let's wait for this build to complete and we'll get back. All right, so the build has successfully completed and we can go ahead and try this again by adding another row. There you go, it says positive again. Now, this is doing it one by one, which is what we want to try and avoid. We want to be able to do this in bulk. So here I have a CSV file with movie reviews and comments, and we want to be doing analysis for that. So let's go ahead and import the file by simply dragging and dropping it here and click continue. And when you click the field that got added, it gives you option to either create a new one or use an existing field. So let's map it to the existing prompt text field and click continue. As you can see, all the values here are shown in the preview. So we can go ahead and click finish. It takes about a second or so, and you can see that all the prompt text is added here. And on top of it, all the response from ChatGPT starts coming in parallelly. So there you go, ChatGPT in bulk. You can easily tweak this template with the code any way you like on exact business logic that you want to perform. And then you can invite your team members with granular access control, whether they'll be able to just view this table, whether they'll be able to add rows, or if they are a non-technical team member who just needs to do a bunch of operations on this table. You can add any column, expand it to build your complete process workflow. I want to highlight a few more things here. So if you go to this section here, which says cloud logs, you'll be able to see the exact logs of all the processes that are running. So here is the build logs of your cloud function. And then if you go to the column section, you'll see here under the chat GPT derivative, you'll be able to see the derivatives logs. Earlier, I had pointed out at logging.log statement, which is used for logging any comments and errors as you build your derivative. All those logs are viewable here and you can explore them further. Another interesting thing is all this data is actually stored on your Firebase under your own database project. So your prompts, the data generated, your API keys, all are very secure because they added to your own Google Cloud project and not on a third party app. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel to get more such updates in your feed. See you in the next one.